Osmosis in Potatoes, Analysis and Conclusion. Here we have a results table from a practical investigation of osmosis in potato chips. To calculate the change in mass that has occurred after the potato chips were left in different solutions, you will need to do the final mass minus the initial mass. The data here shows for a 0% concentration, this would be a final mass of 2.80 grams minus the initial mass 2.60 grams equals a change in mass of 0.20 grams. Remember to be consistent in giving three significant figures. Here are the rest of the results for the data. Note that a decrease in mass produces a negative value for change in mass. The final value to calculate is the percentage change in mass for each potato chip. This is done using the formula change in mass divided by initial mass multiplied by 100. And we can see here for the data for 0% concentration, this would give a change in mass of 0 0.20 grams divided by initial mass 2.60 grams multiplied by 100 to give 7.69% change in mass. We can input this value into the table and do the same for the rest of our results. To ensure the investigation is repeatable, it should be carried out at least three times. If the investigation is repeatable, it will produce the same or precise results each time you repeat. If you have repeated your investigation or pooled class results that followed the same method, then you can put them all into a results table together and calculate the mean. Notice here that we have got all of our results to one decimal place now. So we need to be consistent in using one decimal place to display our data. To calculate the mean change in mass and percentage, we'll need to add up all of the measurements for a concentration and then divide by however many there are. So in this case, three. The data here shows that for 0% concentration, that trial one was 7.7 .7 grams. So we'll add that to trial two of 7.4 grams, added to trial three of 6.9 grams, and then divide by three as we had three trials, which equals a percentage of 7.3%. Again, we input this into our results table and do the same for the rest of our results. So here we have the mean percentage change in mass values for each sucrose solution. As both the independent and dependent variables are continuous variables, a scatter graph is the most appropriate graph type to display this data. When drawing your graph, first look at the data and decide a sensible range, so the minimum and maximum values for each axis. Remember that the x-axis will be the independent variable, so sucrose solution concentration, which will show values from 0 to 100, and needs to have even intervals, so we've chosen 20% intervals. The y-axis will be for the dependent variable, so the mean percentage change in mass. And we'll show values between 10 and minus 45. And we we'll have chosen to use even intervals of five. Note that the x intercepts the axis at zero, helping us clearly see the difference between gained mass and mass loss above and below the x-axis. The axis labels you'll see clearly state the quantity and the units which should put in brackets for each of our variables. The next step is to plot the data from the table. So make sure you carefully locate exactly where to plot each point using the axis and small squares on the graph paper. So for example, at 0% concentration, we must plot 7.3% change in mass. And then we follow through the table to plot all of our points.
Now we can see that as our data has been plotted, we can draw a line of best fit to show the general trend in the data. In this case, we can draw a straight line with a ruler, but if the data was less linear, a curve would also be acceptable. So now we can see that at lower concentrations of sucrose solution, we give an increase in mass of potato. This means that the water has entered the potato cells by osmosis to an area of lower water concentration, indicating that the potato cells were exposed to a hypotonic environment at these conditions. We can also see that at higher concentrations of sucrose solution, we get a decrease in mass of potato. This means that the water is moving out of the potato cells by osmosis to an area of lower water concentration, indicating that these potato cells were exposed to hypertonic environments at these conditions. Finally, we can use the graph to indicate the isotonic concentration at which this, which is the solution which inside and outside the potato cells had the same concentration. Therefore, no excess water was lost or gained at this point. The original hypothesis for this investigation was that the mass of the potato chips will reduce due to water loss as the concentration of sucrose solution increases. Having conducted our investigation, we can conclude that the results do support the hypothesis. As the sucrose solution concentration increases between 40% and 100%, the reduction in mass of potato chips is increased. This shows that more water is lost from the potato cells in hypertonic conditions. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Check out more of our content and remember to subscribe to our channel.